All right. Uh, I'm Ivan. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, I uh, came on working with Derivative about uh, three years ago with a Python background, and they said, hey, the Ableton uses this Python remote scripts to connect uh, all their MIDI devices, the, uh, mi the uh, push, and just about all MIDI devices connect to a Python interface. And so, uh, because Touch uses Python, we figured we can connect them, and so we did. That's, that's what our connection is. And so now the TD Ableton system uh, links very deeply with uh, Ableton Live's Python system. Uh, there's, there's a bit of a trick setting up, so I'm going to walk through setting up. But this is oh, as well, I, wa I wanted to, yeah, I also want to say we're not, we're not going to help you guys through like keeping up. It's not going to be really a workshop. It's going to be more of a presentation because there's too many people in here anyway. Uh -oh. So lost if you want to try to follow along, you can try, but I, I think probably eventually you're going to fall behind. I, I, so I would suggest probably just, so just watch. Along, I, I, don't, I don't think there's a need. Yeah, yeah. You can try to follow along if you want to. It's really, uh, it's not necessarily necessary because I'm just going to do it. What tour, happened to our projector? A brief tour, uh, but it's going to be harder without a projector. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? I don't know. It's no, just like that. Around my laptop, please. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go get Ben. So, the... Do, should we push record? Uh, it should be recording. Yeah, it's recording. So, all of the TD Ableton components that you'll use are in the, the TD Ableton package, which you'll now find in the palette. Uh, I also publish updates to the forum, so if you want to get the latest, greatest, you might keep up with the, the forum post with this. Um... Now, the way that uh, Ableton's remote scripts work, there's an additional step that you need to do in order to set this up, uh, which is a bit tricky because they don't officially support the remote scripts that they use for everything. Uh, and so, well, where you'll find the, the Touch Designer remote script is in the Samples folder. So in, in Help Browse Samples, there's a TD Ableton folder Inside the TD Ableton folder, there's a demo project, and this is the Touch Designer remote script. So what you have to do is you'll copy this, and then you will put it in the, the Ableton remote scripts folder, which is different on a PC and a Mac. And so this is in the wiki. You'll find on the wiki page at the very top, you'll see that this is where you'll find it on a PC. This is where you'll find it on the Mac. Uh, and so what you'll have to do is paste it into uh, your remote scripts folder. You'll see the, rem the remote scripts for tons of other devices. And then you'll paste it in here. Uh, you'll have to restart Touch, or I'm sorry, restart Ableton before it shows up in your list. But once it is in there, in your options, 
your preferences rather. In your preferences, the link MIDI section in the drop down here with all the devices, you'll now have a touch designer device. And that will connect you, or it will allow touch designer to talk to Ableton. Uh, the best way to test this is then to run the demo project that was in that, in the samples folder for touch designer, there's this, this demo project. You can run this. And, uh, and then in Ableton, you'll run the demo live set that's also in that folder. And so here's the demo live set. I'm sorry about my bad musical skills. You're going to hear it a little bit here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they made me do it without any of the regular devices for the suite, so it's, it's kind of bad. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Right, right, right. You don't have to listen to this the whole presentation. So when, <laughs> once you have the demo running in Touch Designer and uh, also in Ableton, you'll see on the master track here, uh, you'll see there's a TDA master device. You'll see that it's connected. Yeah, can you shut that? Don't you want me to shut it? It's going to get warm in here real quick. Oh. Um, just, it, it just don't worry about it. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so, so that will show that it's connected here. Also, if when you're not connected, you'll get an error on your uh, this TD Ableton uh, component is the main connection that's in your package, and that that'll show an error if you're not connected properly. And so, this TD Ableton component is the main thing that is talking back and forth with Ableton, and it has some setup parameters. Uh, you can network, obviously on your home computer you can use uh, this, this local host address, um, but you can point it to Ableton on another computer on the network. And then uh, these are, y you need to talk with two different ports to Ableton, and they're also set up, you can see they correspond to the Ableton master device here, uh, and you need an input port for your for your touch session that Ableton will send stuff back. Oops, did I change something? I did. Yeah, so as you can see, when you have the wrong address, you'll get an error here, disconnected from Ableton Live, and then you can take P out of your address. and reconnect. So once you get that connection going, in order to get data from Ableton, you have, there's this array of orange components here. Whoops, sorry. My, uh, here we go. All of these orange components are different ways that you can connect into your live session. So I'll close this and let's just look at the demo now. Uh, so in the demo, there is a stack basically showing you how to use each of these components. So we'll just go through those and what they give you. So the song component here has the most high-level information about your Ableton set. Uh, Ableton will not give you a file name through the MIDI remote script. So I allowed you can put a song ID in here. Uh, if you're going to be loading different sets and you need to know the, which set you're using, you can put an ID that you'll get. So triggered scene, last started scene, these are, these are the scenes in your song, obviously. Uh, loop, tempo, play, and your main bars, beats, sixteenths, and time. Now these are a little bit different. There's also, so not to confuse with the Ableton link chop. So this, this is another system that is just a timing system between Ableton and Touch Designer and gives you a general beat, but it doesn't tell you where you are in the song or anything like this. Uh, this is actually telling you where you are in your timeline. And so right now we're just looping over this. You'll also see that uh, we're passing different loop points here. 
These are the loop points that you can put markers in your song so you can know where in your song you are uh, in your touch session. And so the main strategy with TD Ableton is uh, just to export chop data from Ableton Live. And so just as an example, like, yes, you can do all the cool things that Touch Designer does with that chop data, making graphics. A few of the... A few of these components will have more data than that. They'll send uh, some extra stuff. This one gives you a list of your cue points. Again, these are your cue points up here. So you have a list of the points in your song and where they're located. Uh, and also a list of your scenes here. So you can track all of your scenes. There's also some Python callbacks for this one so that you know when you're passing a different cue point, it'll give it to you by name. Uh, and also the scenes it'll give to you by name using this callback. So that's the song, top level data. And so the next, the next level in Ableton is your tracks. So you can see that this one's giving the output meter. Uh, well, here, let me show you how to pick your track. So the Ableton components, you're picking the, the part of Ableton you want to look at in your parameters. So they'll all have a general TD Ableton page, which is very basic stuff, like connected or not. And then they'll have a specific page here. Uh, as you can see, it gives you a list of all your tracks, including your return tracks and master track. Uh, and then it's two-way. If you want to control, uh, control Ableton from Touch Designer, these other parameters will give you controls over your different tracks. So if you see we're on the kick track and our volume is here, you can see that that's changing the volume in Ableton as well. And of course, you can export onto those with chops and whatever else you need to control Ableton from Touch Designer. Um, this, the track also will show you your playing position within the track. So. You can see here, uh, but Ableton doesn't show you the playing position. With, oh, okay, sorry. We're playing, we're playing that track. Anyway, so there we go. Here's the, the point in the sample that you're playing is, is here. Mm -hmm. Start marker, end marker, like all of this sort of information is in there. Slow down your tempo. Just to show them. Uh, just go up the tempo and just slow it down. Oh, okay, yeah, you want to see the, the tempo slow down? Yeah. So let's <coughs> slow it down. Now you can see that the, the playing position moves much more slowly. Here, the tempo just... No, the, the timeline, this is a feature that people have been asking for and that I'll certainly add in a future version. The timeline tempo does not match the Ableton tempo. Um, but you can find out the tempo and the position in Ableton in, this, in the song component here. So you can pretty much match it, but yes, it does not, it doesn't change the timeline currently. Uh, and so as usual, this is mostly chop data that this is exporting, but again, the track gives you a little extra information here through this output, tells you what clips are in there and what files, this is a, you know, a large field, so it's off the screen, but what files the samples are coming from. Um, and so these are the, the tracks have just the top level tracks. There's a chain or track component, which lets you dive more deeply because as Ableton users will know, uh, you can go, you can end up with a, a chain of devices within a single track. And so this lets you choose a track where in the effect rack, and then choose a device, which has this audio effect rack here, and then you can go deeper into the chain. So we're looking at the filter delay chain right now. And so the, the Ableton chainer track is very similar to Ableton track but it has uh, the ability to dive deeper into the live nested structure. 
I've only provided four levels mm -hmm. just because uh, you have to do it by hand and, and if you go deeper, that, well, I've just been told that generally musicians don't go deeper than four levels on these effect racks. It seems kind of crazy that you would, but I don't know. Somebody probably does. <laughs> um, and as you can see, what's happening here is this is an example of exporting from an LFO and touch designer to the panning value on effect rack, audio effect rack filter delay. So that's down here and you can see the panning value. Maybe you can see it changing. It's maybe a little small there. But you can see the panning value going back and forth here. Yes, so the, the parameters on the components send commands to Ableton. And so I have this chop exporting onto the parameter. And so it's just automatically moving the pan back and forth from Touch Designer. Is it, is it just the top level chain controls that you can export to? Or can you do the Ableton macro? You can do also? macro as well. Oh yeah, yeah. You'll so, be you'll be able to hit everything in your set, pretty much. Everything yes. that's mapped to a macro, or can you? Can no, you no. You can get you can go right into the okay, cool. individual. No, as camera. as you can see, like every single thing, uh, every track is represented automatically, and so I'll show you diving down into the devices and parameters. We'll we'll get to those components in a second here. Do you need Max Light for it to work? Uh. No. For yeah, for some features. Or isn't it included? You don't need to own Max for Live, no. But but it, some of the features do use Max for Live. But yeah. Can you buy Max without, without? Can you buy Ableton without Max? Can you buy Ableton without Max? Does, yes. Yeah, yes. You can. Yes. But but do Max devices not work when you don't own Max, or can you just not edit them? I'm not sure. I don't think they work because they uh, use like the environment. If I, that, I don't think you need Max for this to work. Yeah. No. Um, there are some features that won't work without Max for Live. Okay. Uh, for oh yeah. Well, there's some features. I mean, yeah, yeah. for example, you won't be able to use this master component. This yeah, is yeah, built in Max different. for Live. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not 100 percent necessary. These are de these are the default values that are in here right now. So it will still connect at 8,000, 8,010, but you won't be able to change your Ableton port, mm -hmm. the listening port. Uh, so I would say Max for Live is highly recommended. Yeah. yeah. Okay, looking at the, the next component here is an Ableton clip slot. So these are clip slots in your track, for those of you that don't know. Uh, looks similar to the track. It has, um, it has your output meters. Uh, it has your, your basic track information and your playing positions. But what this one has is a few extra parameters to help control the clip slot. So you can fire the clip and stop the clip uh, so he'll just fire it. You can see it firing here in Ableton, and now you now we're getting a playing position. So this is this one, unlike the track that will follow the playing position of whatever clip is playing. In this one, you name a particular slot. So again, you have your drop-down menu of clip slots. Even if it's empty, there's nothing here, but it still shows empty because you have a scene there. Um, and then this MIDI clip output is a, an interesting feature. You can, you can choose a range here and you can, this output here will give you a list of all the MIDI notes that are in your MIDI clip. So let's take a look at that. Uh, where are we? Base one. So here is our MIDI clip in Ableton. Here's the list of the notes here, and I have just created this visualizer, very simple, not pretty, but here's a visualizer and touch designer of the notes that you have, uh, which can be very useful because, because we're sending OSC messages back and forth at a rapid rate, there can be a little bit of delay, and having the notes ahead of time can definitely help you time things absolutely perfectly with touch designer. So it's good to be able to look at those. The other thing that this clip slot allows you to do is with just a, a very little bit of Python, basically 
here's a list of notes that this sends. Uh, you can swap out the notes. So now we're, you can fill the MIDI clips, the, the MIDI clip with the notes that you want using just a simple Python list of notes. So that, that allows you to fully program your clips from Touch Designer. Should I slow down? Are there any questions? Can you create new clips? Can you? Uh, you cannot create new clips right now. You, I mean, you can with a with Python. I don't have a component to do that, but that's a fine idea. Again, this is it's an evolving system, so uh, definitely if you if you have needs, uh, post them on the forum, and as it evolves, we'll add features. Uh, certainly, you could. You could create a bunch of empty clips ahead of time in Ableton and then write to them for now. Um, can you send the MIDI notes without um, just on, on, on real Yes, yes we'll, get, we'll get to that, uh, that one soon, absolutely. Uh, so this component here, now we're gonna get into the parameter level. And so this component, take a closer look. This is an Ableton device parameters. And so what this one is looking at is the Muggy Track pitch device. Again, you just choose all these things with drop downs, and you can dive through the hierarchy with these. Uh, so looking at our pitch device, here we have the pitch device. And this is all of the parameters that are on it. And so you can see that it will react to changes here. This particular one is a one-way connection. It doesn't create parameters for outgoing, but then the next component will let you control the parameters from Touch Designer. This is basically just for watching one device. So this one here is one specific Ableton parameter. <coughs> Again, you're diving through the hierarchy. You track muggy device pitch. Parameter is also called pitch. And so we have this. And from the parameter, you can control it as well. You don't want to hear what this sounds like, but uh, you can also, uh, obviously, some devices are very big, have a ton of parameters. It's not clear which one is which. So you can select a parameter in Ableton and then press the map from live button, hmm. it'll automatically jump to that parameter Ooh, with nice. this device. <laughs> Makes it much easier. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, because some of these, like this one, have a tremendous list of parameters. And so this is your, your two-way connection for parameters, as we said, like the device parameters, you can get every parameter, but this is for watching Ableton. This is if you want to control the Ableton parameter one by one. Um, notice that the Ableton parameter is simplified. It just has track device parameter. The, the Ableton chain parameter is exactly the same as parameter, but I just added all these extra parameters here to dive all the way down four devices deep. So, uh, getting to that question that was asked earlier, we can look at this Ableton MIDI component. Uh, so what's happening here is we're getting a separate channel for every note coming in. The value is the velocity of the MIDI notes coming in. Can you turn on the audio for this, but just mute that solo that track? What? Okay. Um, so yes, Jared is asking me to solo this track, which we have pitched down too far. Right. That's enough of that. Um, so you, you can see that it's going through. It's going through the notes. It also gives you the last note played. And the last velocity, which is, 
It's just a quick and easy way to base something on notes rather than setting up something for a ton of separate channels. You can just get this one channel with the last note and do like a simple graphic based on that. This has callbacks too, right? Uh, this one has callbacks as well. We'll look at that in a second. Here's just a simple device that Peter Systrom made that uses this and showing the, the notes playing on the keyboard. Sometimes eats up a little time, so I'll just kill that now that that is done. Uh, yes, so this one also has callbacks that you can turn on or off. Uh, the reason being that 60 frames per second is not always enough to catch MIDI notes, especially if you're making graphics for drum and bass or something like that. Uh, so if you want to make sure you get every MIDI note that comes in, you can enable the MIDI callbacks and uh, that will give you a bunch of MIDI events that tell you all the information, tells you all the same information basically, but, uh, but you won't miss any. You know, if you get 10, 10 MIDI events in a frame, then you'll see all of them instead of when you look at it in a chop, you can't see it change 10 times in a frame. Uh, the Ableton MIDI component also lets you send MIDI, which again, it requires a little bit of simple Python. Very simple. Uh, take, we'll take a look at this MIDI command. I guess maybe I should keep that weird stretchy view so that maybe you can see that. So it's just sending a MIDI note, note 40, uh, velocity 100. And in the wiki, there's all the different commands you can send. You can do all the channel controls and every type of MIDI message uh, in, that, in that Python. And so I guess, again, maybe we'll turn on the sound. And I don't know if you can hear that very well, but... And here is an example. You can also... Oh, here's an example of sending pitch bend messages. Sorry, not super loud, but, uh, but so that's how, that's how you can send MIDI notes in real time. Um, sending MIDI notes in real time at 60 frames per second is not very good. So I, I was actually talking to one of the artists here today who, uh, he has a system that sends MIDI notes real time and it's a separate touch process that he runs with no display at like, it was something like 380 frames per second he said he needed to, to drive it up to. So if you want to do real time music sent from touch designer, that's probably what you have to do. Uh, super high frames per second process just for sending the MIDI notes. Um, but it is very cool. I think he's gonna be performing at seven tonight in the main hall. Can I do that in a component with its own timeline set to 300 frames? Yeah, you can increase your frame rate to that. Just in, in you can increase your frame rate in a in a component. Oh, in a, just a component. Yeah, with a with a timeline. With its own timeline. Oh, oh, you mean with the hierarchical time, the yeah. local time? No, no. I don't. I don't you think can. you can. You can only go. Yeah, the, yeah. the top level time is the is max. the is the max. Yeah. You need a separate touch designer process to do that. Yeah. Um, Again, that's what makes this MIDI clip super useful. If you want to control music from Touch Designer, if you can calculate what you want to do a little bit ahead of time, you can send it a list of notes over OSC, and then Ableton will play them at the right times. Much better than trying to, you know, quantize your Touch Designer. He said, uh, this, this fellow said, even at 380 frames per second, he still gets some glitches, but he likes those glitches, so it was okay with him. <laughs> uh, okay, so last component on this in the demo here is an Ableton value listener, which will give you a little peek into what's going on behind the scenes in these. And so, what this allows you to do is if you can uh, decipher the various Python MIDI scripts that are online, you can give it. A, you can give it a. Um, an object that Ableton understands. So I've made a macro called song so that you can talk directly to the song in Ableton, but the property metronome is something that I haven't specifically built into any of these components. Uh, 
But Ableton, this is now sending Ableton a bit of code asking for its metronome object. And so this will tell you if your metronome is on or off. And so you can, you can basically write Python code in here that will talk directly to the MIDI remote scripts. Do you want to show the live and, object model? And just to, uh, yeah, let's let's Maybe look up the live on. object model. It's kind of crazy. So, this is a map of what's going on in Ableton Live, and all the the devices that these components are navigating for you. Uh, mainly in the song, this is the one that I called ca Capital Song a Macro to get to this. So you have Song uh, View, which is like the the graphical representation here, and then you have all your tracks, your scenes, and your cue points. And we saw looking at those. Each track, you can follow these chains. The track has a, has a device and a mixer device and clip slots. And the device can also uh, have its own chain. So that's like the, uh, the effect rack is a device that has its own chain of devices, these two different chains. So it can loop back. It, it all gets very crazy. But if you're, if you're into hacking in this way, you can... You can use Touch Designer to get in there. And let me show you one feature here. On, the, on this TD Ableton master device, the one, if you'll remember, that's talking to Ableton, there's a console for experimenting. If you want to dive into your live sets Python, you can then say, so the song macro that, it, that is created by Touch Designer. But you can say song tracks zero dot name, for example and it will tell you the track name. Uh, so the trick here is uh, you will find online not any official documentation for these, but you will find hackers have created these long lists of all of the live Python objects. <laughs> Pretty crazy. <laughs> uh, and so... <laughs> These are, these are all the different things. And so the goal of TD Ableton was really to give you like very easy component access to these things without having to deal with all of that crazy nonsense. Uh, it, it does have a very nice uh, Python extension. If you know Python, you can learn the extension. It's all documented in the wiki, and you can make your own components and talk to the live script directly with the Python. One thing to note is that Ableton Live's Python is Python 2, and Touch Designer's Python is Python 3, so there are some minor differences. Uh, but if you're good with Python, you can figure it out, and this console will help you greatly being able to talk directly to, to your live set. You can kind of experiment with it. You know, you can say device 0 dot parameters, 0 dot value, Oh, I got something wrong. I don't know. Uh, device. Not device, but devices. So you can get your parameter values. So you can, you can kind of find your thing using the console. And then if it's simple enough, you might be able to use this value listener and just set up the property in here. But it can also return uh, a dictionary or a complex data structure. Huh? Will Ableton also return a complex data structure? Well, Ableton... Uh, so it's actually the Touch Designer remote script returns a very complex data structure that is your entire live set. And uh, that is something you never ever want to try to print because it'll kill your computer for about five minutes. Um, but that's how I'm generating all of these things. And uh, so for example, let me see if I can get this right. Op.td Ableton. That is, that's your master component. And we'll get into uh, these global shortcuts later. Uh, Op.ableton. Song info. Tracks. Keys. I'm not sure if I remember this. Yeah, hey, I remembered. Uh, so. 
this is in OptD Ableton is song info is the dictionary that is sent for touch designer from Ableton. It, it has a tracks, uh, a tracks dictionary. And then I'm just looking at the keys. This is actually a trick. If you, if you want to explore the song info dictionary, or if you want to explore any of the dictionaries within song info, you should always look at the dot keys because which just shows you the labels and not the information because the information goes so deep that it will stall your computer trying to look at it. Because it's basically storing every device, every parameter is all within that dictionary. And it, yes. Uh, in, in some cases it will edit it selectively. In other cases it has to get the whole list. So it's a bit slow, but you will notice that uh, here I can add a new track here. Here, I'll just copy this one. It does, oh, oh yes, this is, a, this is an important caveat, actually. For Touch Designer to access things properly, it uses the names, and they are not forced to be unique in Ableton. So if you have a bunch of tracks with the same name, Touch Designer won't know which one to pick. So it will warn you if there's duplicates, uh, and you can turn off those warnings if you don't like them. Again, at the master level, there's, there's a report duplicate names parameter. But I recommend you just get in the practice of giving things unique names. Uh, so would it just pick one? It would just pick one. And, and in some cases, it would choke in weird ways. Uh, so generally, if you, yeah, if you need to access either of those tracks, it is much better to yeah, just make sure that they have separate names. Uh, so now when we go to the track list, if having the same name didn't mess it up too badly, we now have kick two there. <coughs> and so, and uh, you can also rename things, and it will it will fix your component and keep your lists updated here. What this allows you to do, uh, um, it will. It allows you to kind of rearrange your song, move things around. That's why it's based on names so that you can move things, uh, or especially if you're an artist working with a musician, they can move stuff around. And <coughs> Touch Designer will do everything it can to keep up with their changes. They, they can certainly break it, especially if Touch Designer is running, it will keep up much better. So if Touch Designer is connected and the musician is moving things all around, Touch Designer will keep up with it. If you have your touch designer stuff saved and touch designer is closed and they rearrange everything, maybe it can recover, maybe it can't. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, you, you may have to repoint things to the right tracks and, and stuff if the musician is changing things without touch designer running. Uh, so that's, that's basically the tour of how this what about the MIDI, the MIDI plugin? Are you oh, okay, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Uh, so, most of these features I was able to do completely through the MIDI remote script. But interestingly, the only piece of data that the MIDI remote script will not give you is the actual MIDI notes. Uh, and so, this MIDI component here requires sure, this right. TDA Max device. <clears throat> And so, but what happens if you have a MIDI track? MIDI track, but there's no, there's no Max device on there. And you're connected to a musician and you want to get the MIDI data. You don't want to go over to their Ableton set and bother them to add it. You can simply, from Touch Designer, you can click Add TDA MIDI device and it will pop it in there for you. And where and, that's located, and, depending and, on board. And yes, yeah. and so where this device is located, is uh, is where the MIDI is going to be picked up. So in this example, this one is scaling all the notes into C minor. If you put this MIDI device before that, it's pre-scaling. You'll get the MIDI notes before this MIDI effect. And so that can be really useful if, if they have a MIDI effect that's playing a chord and you don't want three notes every time, you can just put this device before the chord effect. Uh, yeah, so so that's an important point. That's this is currently the one MIDI device that's necessary within your 
within stuff. It's only necessary for getting MIDI notes. So all the other features will work without without this Max device. Uh, the other, one second, the, the other Max device right now is, is the TDA Master. And I actually have an, an idea for a new one, so there'll be another one soon. What's the, yeah. what's the master one do? The, oh, this master oh, one? Oh, that's the one that you put in. The master one is, is just to show your connection. You can get a, give it a song ID. Pardon my Facebook. Uh, and you can set up your ports, the ports that Ableton is listening to here. Yeah, so why don't you show like the difference between a local, locally connected, and then if you're doing it on the network, how would you set that up? Uh, yeah, we we talked about that a little bit earlier, but just as a reminder that if you, this one is going to localhost, it's as simple as finding the Ableton session running on another network computer, <coughs> putting in their address, and it will connect across the network. <coughs> Because all of this is done with OSC, so you're sending a huge pile of OSC messages, which is something to keep aware keep aware of. It will it will try to um, it will try to be efficient about you know if if three things are looking at the same track, it will only send it once. Uh, but do be aware that what's actually happening here. Maybe that's not the one. Where are the O? Uh, I don't know. Anyways, yes, there is a huge pile of OSC in messages coming into this. Sorry, what's your question? Can you start at the position of this uh, in the chain? Like you move it along the chain? Like you said. The timeline, you mean? Yeah, the no, plate. The, the device, the, the MIDI device. When you, when you oh, when you place it? Uh, no. I, that's another feature that I would like to add soon. Currently, uh, sorry, I'll turn off my Wi-Fi here. <laughs> Rude. Um, yeah, currently you can't control that from touch. You will be able to soon, but right now where it, where it defaults to is uh, it defaults to the final point right before the instrument currently. So you'll, you'll get the actual notes that you're hearing is the idea there. Yeah. Can you control the playhead position uh, from touch to touch? Or you can just jump between the locators in the song? Um, can you, I think, I don't think I actually have that feature to jump around the song currently. Uh, again, once we once we sync up the timeline, that that will be that'll probably be implemented at the same because time. In Ableton, but you can scrub through through things. You can just jump between locators, uh, or uh, you can just move the playhead freely. And it would be really nice to have this feature. You can or you cannot. You cannot. Okay. I mean, I doubt that I can do anything that Ableton will not let uh. you do. But I can probably do the same thing that Ableton does, where you click and it it will jump back. Mm -hmm. I forget where is it, somewhere in here. Click in the back. There, yeah, there. yeah, right in the middle. Uh, Go up, 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 just a little bit more. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's probably the best that I can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, I'm 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 only like giving Ableton its regular commands through the Python scripts. I'm not fully in control of the yeah. software. Yeah. Oh, back. Uh, yes. I have not tried it in ten yet. I, I don't have it, but uh, I guess this week I'll be able to try it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I noticed on the Ableton track device, you can get the active clip ID whenever you when you're triggering a clip. Will give you the currently playing clip and currently triggering clip. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's. It doesn't have a channel with the active clip for name. Looks like you can get that out of the DAC. Correct. Already, with the callback by the pointer. Correct. Is there a reason that uh, we ha you have to do that manually and that's not built into? Uh, just because the idea of chops is they, they don't they're not really made for carrying text data so much, and you want to be able to attach to the to the chop channel name with and not have that name change behind your back, and so that's why I have you look up. If you if you really want the clip name, you need to look it up. 
on the on the chart there. The Is it table. To connect from two touch designer instances? Yes, one? you can you can connect two touch designer instances to one Ableton and you can connect one Ableton to uh, two touch designer instances. Uh, the way you have to do that, in, it's it's in the demo. I have a second Ableton package, so this is what you'll get from the from the palette here. You'll get an Ableton package. In the demo, there's a another package, and the difference the there's minor differences. The main one is that this one has a different global op shortcut, and so every Ableton component is looking for its master component and so you can set up a second master component you just you change your Ableton comps to this and so all of these are set up to look at this second master component and so this the other master component can then be looking at a different network address for a different Ableton live session so yes they can connect multiple to one and one to multiple both ways uh, yes is this is kind of an audio follower thing that follows the mixer windows. The envelope? The level, the level follower mm -hmm. component somewhere, audio level. Do you, do you have the level? Do you, you mean the, the level of the, the sound playing? Yeah. yeah, the audio, uh, so audio level. There's, there's a component that follows the levels. Yes. But it so it looks looks at the looks at the mixer. Yeah, it's there. This the one looks one. at the mixer, which has the lag. The, the lag on yeah. it. Is it? Yes. I, I, I and that's that feature is coming <coughs> soon. I what this is when I said uh, there's one more Max device I want to add. That's the Max device because Ableton rem, the MIDI remote scripts will not give you the actual audio value. They give you this mixer level that has that lag. It, it's so much better to have that value coming. I in. I, I, I learned that at this yeah, at this event. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's so much better to have that value come in from the CD Ableton pack rather than from your audio inputs, which has. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's calculated so much faster. Yeah, it's yeah, so you, much better this yes. way. But it's a shame that it has that lag now. Yes, uh, agreed. And so. Uh, Within the within the next couple of months, I'll make this Max device. I, I need to I need to get that audio information. It's not provided uh, in a basic features of the MIDI remote script. You have to do that in Max. So I have to I have to do that in Max. So it'll be it will be like this TDA MIDI device, where I you'll put it in the instrument chain somewhere, yeah. and it yeah. will it will grab the audio level at that point in the chain and send it back to Touch Designer. Yeah, yesterday in a in a talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I saw them. Yeah, I, yeah. I saw them, and I was like, "Of course, yeah, I, I need to give people that." So, yeah, definitely going to going to make that. Um, the thing I've noticed in the past with working with the Max devices and the live object model is when you remotely control Ableton, you get a whole bunch of data in your undo mod. Um, and I've actually had a live performance crash because my undo, undo filled up like thirty gigabytes and filled up my hard drive. Oh. Because I had Max devices that were um, taking like a knob input and redefining the curve that that yeah, yeah, yeah. to turn it from zero to undo, one. Undo, 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 undo. And that gave me thousands and thousands of undo steps. And the only thing yeah. that I found that purges the undo industry is saving the file, which on this particular set would stutter the audio because it was actually saving the file. Certainly. But, so I'm certainly. wondering if you've encountered if you can, that. Or, or if you can disable uh, it, maybe. I yeah. did. Let me see. Let's stop this and see if. How do we look at the undo? If I am adding. Or, I just found it. This is on Ableton like on temp, Mac. I it's found a temp file on the disk. It's like a binary on the disk that I just saw growing, growing, growing. And growing. So somewhere in like the. Yeah, I think I think I, I remember seeing that, and I, when you mentioned it, I forgot if I had solved it or not. But yeah, I don't think that I am adding to the undo stack anymore. Yeah, I I, I found a way to to change things without adding to the undo stack. Amazing. But that's good to know. Yeah, that's. Uh, Yes, I discovered that late in development that I was adding to the undo stack. I didn't realize you could crash. I just thought I was, you know, yeah. it might mess up your undo. But I figured if you're sending data from Touch Designer, it's probably not when the artist is going to be undoing. So yeah. I thought they were just losing undo data, but yeah. good to know that I'm avoiding a crash as well. Sending really high stuff, you can just Right. I could see where you would. Hmm. I mean, but I, you know, this one is sending constant data from this chop. 
for example, in this demo, yeah. it's just set, you know, tons of undo steps that would be creating. Yeah, so, it must be something that was just fixed in the Max API images. I remember for a time, yeah. you couldn't do something with the live object model through Max that didn't go into the image. Right, yes, yeah, so I, I had to change the way the Python gave its commands to, to avoid adding to the undo stack. Okay. Yeah. Um, where do you find the Python long reference? The link you have on the Julian Bell side is that? Oh, it is? Yes. Uh, At least the one you have on the weekend. Oh, OK. Really? I may need to update that then. And we should show link as well before we finish, which we have five minutes. So. Um, if you want it, if you if you search Julian Bale, you'll you'll find that thing. No. No. no You're not no. finding this. What I have it cached or something? I guess so. You putting this exact link in there? Uh, uh, uh. You know what it is? I think I think I know what it is. If you. Yeah, it's HTTPS he changed it to. Sorry, I've been meaning to change that. Uh, yes, yeah, so in the wiki, there is an address that needs to be updated. I'll get to that very soon. But uh, yeah, he just recently oh, changed. No, <coughs> is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Anyways, yeah, the, this link, I just discovered that last week, right? Because I just have it shortcutted here. Yeah. But. Uh, Yes, I'll update that soon so that those of you who really want to dive into this craziness can do so. Uh, okay, so maybe one, one last subject with Touch Designer and Ableton is the Ableton link. This is, this is Ableton's system, and I actually need to set up my audio drivers differently. Ableton link uh, generally only works with ASIO driver type and you click the link on your Ableton and then theoretically Touch Designer will link enable enable yes and then when it links so, yeah you can so see now I'm linked and you can and so and this show the, it, point at the icon there the link icon ah uh, yeah so you can see that it's linked up here one link and so this is Ableton's system of perfect, allowing different devices on a network to perfectly sync up to it. And if you compare, I'll just tell you, uh, if you compare, you will notice that TD Ableton is maybe 0.01 seconds behind this, uh, just because the MIDI remote scripts are a bit slower than the official Ableton link. Uh, but if you just need timing information, so the, the message here is if all you need from Ableton is timing information, then you should use this Ableton link only. If you, if you want to dig into your set and get all the data of the music being played, then you use TD Ableton for that. Could you do something cheeky like pull, get bury the MIDI that's in a clip and then with the 16th kind of that is, uh, that was one of the main motivations for making this system, yeah. where you can, yeah, you can look at the MIDI clip and then you can time these dead on so by, you can, you can by watching Ableton time. Link. Yeah, yeah, you can look ahead, so you can do a little look ahead trick. Yeah. Absolutely. So I've seen you're adding notes, but can you remove those notes as well, right? Or can you? Uh, yeah, if you'll, we'll take a look at this Python a little bit. Um you'll see that this command, can you read this? I can't tell on the screen. Can you, if you can read this line, you'll see that I give it a remove notes command. Uh, so I, I clear out all of the notes in this range. This is a, a range of, uh, it's a, a time range and a note range. And then I add these four notes and that's what this button does. Uh, the, the methods that you, or the extensions that you find there, is that Yes, in, in the wiki, wiki documents how to do this, working with these MIDI notes. Right. It will document how to send the MIDI notes in real time. And there is also a document, if you're a heavy Python programmer, all of these components are built on the same base extension that basically provide a ton of features for interacting with the, uh, with the Python that goes on in Ableton.
The push? Uh, the, it's not directly related to the push, uh, but kind of what, what we're doing here is touch designer is sort of pretending to be a push and gathering up all that information and more. But that's but that's I mean, if kind you want to push, it's going to feel completely integrated with touch. That's kind of how it works. And and yes, I mean, anything that happens in Ableton, you'll see in Touch Designer. So you can play with your push just as well as you can play here with the mouse. And it will all show up in Touch Designer. Yeah. Because you can, like, uh, make loops in Touch and then go to another loop sec section if you make, like, a, a different type of... Uh... Uh, if you... If you wanted to go to different loop section, that sort of thing, yeah, you you can set up start markers and end markers in your able to track, uh, or in your clips. You can in the clip component, you can also set up loop points. So yeah, you can jump the loop around from Touch Designer, and all sorts of weird stuff that probably people haven't even begun to experiment with. Okay. But soon. Is the uh, is the color? information of the clip or track available. Not yet. That's another feature we've talked about That's adding sometime soon. Yeah. Right. Good one. Group information and, feedback, right? mm -hmm. and group information yeah, yeah, course, right. also has to happen. Yes. Um, yeah. So slowly adding all of the features. Yes. So if I want to try this console to dig into the API, uh -huh. and I look up uh, on Julian Bale and I see their live dot application browser. Yes. Is that the string I need to copy into the console? Uh, because then it says <laughs> macros exist. Yes. No. Some of the some of the things I've added macros because you have to access it a certain way. So if you want to access the application, you do capital A P P dot, and that's live dot application, and that's documented in the wiki as well. There, there's a object for the app, an object for the song, uh, and, and a couple other things that are object, are tricky to access. Like directly, so I, I give you a macro for it. Okay, so if you didn't write a macro yet, if you probably didn't for the browser, then I would have to do that on the remote script side. Uh, possibly. <laughs> it depends on the situation. Maybe you can find a way to hack and, and get it from the song, probably. I think that if you start from the app, you should be able to get everything. You should be able to dive in from capital APP. Okay. But uh, yes, you should. I, I don't think you should ever have to mess with the Touch Designer remote script. Cool. Last questions before we move on to uh, to designing modular components. 